All right, uh, well, I'd like to welcome you to the workshop. This is actually the first of two parts that are related to the same subject, which is time management. And I wanted to say right at the beginning, kind of plant a little thought in your mind. <clears throat> in all the years that I've been teaching, and I've been here for a long, long, long time, one thing that I've discovered more than anything else, and I'm so confident about this that I would almost put money on it if I were a betting man, is that the number one reason, <clears throat> excuse me, why most people don't make it through college. So they drop out, they, uh, for whatever reason, don't reach a degree, they don't transfer, whatever their goals are, <clears throat> is because of really poor skills and habits in this area. This is why we do two separate workshops, because it's kind of a big topic. And so um, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more specifically, just so you know this, about how to set up a daily and a weekly schedule, how to avoid procrastinating, which is a really big problem for a lot of people. Those are the two main topics next week. And today, what we're uh, aiming to do is to get you thinking about the way you spend time now figure out how you might be able to spend it a little better. And there are three questions that I'm going to um, give to you to have you think about and learn to answer for yourself. That's kind of the structure of the workshop. The first one is the one that I always give people first, because if the answer to this one is yes, then everything else I teach you is going to do you no good. So this is a really important one to start with. And so here's what it is. Am I too busy? Okay, if you're the type of person who has taken on way too much and you don't have enough hours in the day to even get everything done, then anything else you try for time management isn't going to work because you won't have time to do it. So it's kind of obvious. So what I'm going to do with you is sort of a modified version of what I do when I teach this in my class. and should have mentioned this before too, I think some of you know that, but I teach Learn 11, which is a study skills course. Uh, and uh, we cover in that course the same things that I teach here, except just way more and more in detail. And so I always start with this, and then I ask students to write a bunch of numbers, because when it comes to time, it's all about numbers. Minutes and hours and days and weeks and all of that. So if this looks like a math workshop for a little while, and you hate math, don't turn me off, keep focusing, it, it'll be pretty simple for you to do. So here's the first thing. Um, one of the things that everybody in here needs to do on a daily basis is certain just basic activities that are life activities. We're not going to take the time to do this today, but you can jot this down if you like and on your own just take a few minutes to think about it later today or whenever. Um, these are five categories that you do, I uh, hope, pretty much every day. Okay, sleep, eat, travel. The fourth one would be running errands. And then the fifth one is hygiene. Okay, uh, what is this, by the way, just to make sure we all are clear? Yeah, whatever you do to make yourself presentable, so brush your teeth, shower, uh, whatever, okay? Um, by travel, I mostly mean the basic travel to and from school, to and from work, that kind of thing. And then the errands are just all the other things you run around and do. Well, almost everybody does all five of these every day. So the question for you to figure out is, on the average day, if there is such a thing, how many hours do you spend total doing all five of these? I'm going to write numbers up here that are semi-average. And yours might be higher or lower, but it gives you kind of a starting point, something to think about. So these are um, kind of average numbers, seven hours of sleep, two hours for preparing and eating and cleaning up after whatever a person does, one hour for travel, one hour for errands, and maybe an hour for hygiene. So that's without fractions, just to make it simple to add. So you're, again, if you fill all these out, you think about how much time you spend, it could be higher, but this total equals 12. Okay, and what's the significance of this number 12 in terms of hours? Yes, half a day, right? So if you were to calculate your total for this, and like a lot of students, it's 14, 15, 16, uh, that's pretty depressing for a minute because it means that you do these things which are a required part of life and it takes over half the day 
So over half the day is gone. That means you don't have very many hours left for everything else you need to do and also like to do. So quick question, and again, we won't spend too much time on this. What are some categories of a person's life, things that they need to do or like to do that are not listed here? School, work, uh, like family, exercise. exercise, yeah, socializing, entertainment, the list goes on and on. Do you do all of those things every day? Probably not, but they're part of your life and you want them to be a regular part. So if your total is around this or a little more or less, it means you have about half the day left for everything else. If your total is high, it means you only have part of the day left. And so you have to become a professional juggler. You have to keep all the different activities going. And that's hard for a lot of people, especially when you're pulled in many different directions because of the things you have to do in your life. So that's the first thing. And then second, uh, there is a number that is a, always a very significant number to me as a teacher, and it's this one, the number 56. And what I teach people about this is that this is what I always refer to as the magic number for time management. It's a number that's really important to remember, and I'll explain why that is uh, now. Um, if a person worked eight hours a day, what would that mean about them? What is eight hours a day of work? Yeah, full time, right? So that's kind of thought as full time. If a person worked eight hours a day, seven days a week, that would be a busy person, right? What's the total here? 56, 56 right? So uh, even though some of you are not working right now, school is your job, I want you to first think that this number is like 56 hours a week, which would be like someone working eight hours a day, seven days a week, okay? That's a lot. Is this person too busy or not? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but if they told you that they were also looking for another 20-hour-a-week 20 job to add to this, then I think you'd look at them, I hope, if you had any compassion and you'd think, ooh, that's, that's a lot. You may kill yourself, okay? So what does this have to do with you as a student? And so this is what you can actually take a minute to do if you would. Uh, this should be pretty easy, I think, for everybody. The first one, is to write down the number of units that you're taking this semester. And I'm gonna put a number here, but I don't really want you copying mine. I just want you to put what's true for you. This is a, sort of a typical number. Uh, and before we go any further, what does this mean? It means um, full time. Okay, so I don't know why they do that. Sometimes people have 11 units and they are unbelievably busy, but the college just says part-time. If you're 12 or higher, you're considered full-time, okay? So that's one. And then the second thing that I want you to do is take whatever number you wrote and I want you to double it or multiply it by two. That's your complicated math for the day. So in my case, it would be 24, but again, yours could be way higher or way lower. And then the third one, which for most people is pretty easy, is to write down the number of work hours that you have this semester. And if you're not working, that's easy, zero. If you are, how many hours per week do you work? And so I'm gonna put a typical part-time job here, but again, your hours could be zero all the way to whatever. And again, it's your sort of customized uh, idea. Okay, after you have your three numbers, go ahead and take a second and add them together and circle the total. And then we're gonna look at what that might mean about you, okay? So I'm gonna circle mine, but I'll give you a second to add those three numbers. Okay. Quick question first, uh, you notice how we got the same number again here. Um, how many of you have a total, if any, that's higher than this? We have two, okay. How many of you have a total that's lower than 40? Below 40? Okay, some more. And then the rest of you should be between 40 and 56 unless I lost you and you're still <coughs> counting. That's okay. Well, what does all this mean? First of all, I wanna look at this with you just for a second. Some of you may already know this, so you can kind of let us know. Um, if you take a class in college that is three units, and I'm sure almost everybody here has at least one of those this semester because it's the most common number, how many hours per week do most three hour, or sorry, three uh, unit classes meet? Per week. Total for the week, the total time that you're in class for the week. 
Yeah, what a lot of people say is two and a half because they're thinking of a class that meets an hour and 15 minutes twice a week. But that sort of doesn't include the little passing period, so to speak. So technically what I want you to get is that most regular lecture type classes that are three units meet roughly three hours a week. And that's why they're three units is because of the number of hours. Now, is this always true? No. Some uh, people are in a vocational program and it might be 10 units and they spend 25 hours there a week. Doesn't match. Other times people have a uh, science lab class that's one unit and they're there way more than one hour a week. And so this is more for straight lecture classes. So if you had a psychology class, a history class, political science, things like that, that is usually the case, one for one. So that would mean that this person, if they had 12 units of regular lecture type classes, they would be in class about 12 hours a week, okay, approximately. So that's the idea. Okay, so uh, who wants to give us what you either know or think you know that this line is all about? What is this for right here? Yeah, this is um, everybody's favorite activity in the whole world, which is studying. And everybody says, oh, that. Okay, yeah, that. Um, I don't know how many of you have ever heard this before. This little formula right here is not a rule that everyone has to follow. It's a guideline. It's kind of like an uh, educated guess in a way. It says that for every hour that you spend in class, you should plan to study two hours outside of class so that you can be successful and reach all the goals you have in college. Okay? So if that's true, that means somebody who has a class that meets three hours a week would do the advanced math and come up with that number, right? Six hours of studying per week. Now, if I told you that you need to study six hours a week, I would think everybody in here would say, all right, if I have to. It doesn't scare anybody, really. You just go, all right. But how many classes is this for? Yeah, yeah one. And so that doesn't scare anybody. This number scares <laughs> almost everybody. Because it's, again, saying if you're a full-time student with 12 units, you should study 24 hours a week, approximately. That's a lot of hours, OK? That's like four hours a day, six days a week. It's like a job which is what it's supposed to be, actually, but that's what it is. Well, some people don't think they have that many hours to study, so that might be the answer to that. Other people say, I could find the time, but I hate studying. I forget everything I study. I don't know what I'm doing when I study. So I could sit there for 24 hours during the week, but it's a waste of time. Well, these workshops, along with Learn 11, are designed to try to help people to learn how to study better take less time to study, but get more done and remember more and all of that. So if you keep coming to workshops, you'll be getting ideas uh, related to that. Um, this person here is a full-time student with a part-time job. And when you add those three numbers, the hours in class, the study time, and the work hours, if the total goes over 56, what does that usually mean as the answer to that? Yeah, it probably means the person is too busy. If the number is below that, it probably means they're okay. But I have to say this to kind of wrap this up, and that is, who is the biggest expert in the world at how much a person can handle? Yeah, not me. Uh, some people have said you. They're trying to compliment me or whatever. So it's not me, it's you, because you're the one who lives your life. But I have seen so many students make a mistake in this area and take on way too much and kind of fall apart as a result. And I'm gonna give you one quick example of this. Um, every semester that I teach at this college, I have a conversation with a student in the second or third week. And this is now the fourth week. And I had this conversation with somebody last week. It's a different student every time, but they all say the same thing. It's like the same conversation. It's really weird. Somebody I've never met before walks up to me really fast, and just like this, they say, are you Scott? And whenever somebody comes up to me fast and says that, I say this, uh, why? as I'm backing up. And they say, somebody, uh, my friend told me that you help people with time management and organizing your time. And I am already behind in all my classes and I can't find enough time to, and they're just talking really fast and just getting all upset. And I think everybody here knows whether this is your first semester of college or you've been around for a while, if you're already behind in all your classes and it's the fourth week, 
that's bad. Because it's just going to get busier and busier as you go. And so um, this person seems nice, and they're coming to me for help, so I want to help them, but they also seem frazzled already. And so I ask them this, how many units are you taking? They always say something like this. They say, oh, I have 15. That tells me a lot right there, okay? What's the next number that pops into my head when they say this? 30, 30. okay? Now, do I know that they're gonna need that much? No, but again, it's just a, a guess, all right? Now, when you add these two numbers together, you get 45. So this is like a 45 hour a week job. There's no work here. It's just going to class and studying, but that's a full-time job all in and of itself. Well. 45 is well below this, so it doesn't sound too crazy. So I say to the person, well, as long as you're not working, maybe you're just not using your time as wisely as possible, and I'll be happy to give you some ideas. And their answer is always the same. They say, oh, I work. So I grab anything I can, and I say, how many hours a week? What do you think they usually tell me? Yeah, not, you know, 16 on the weekends or whatever, 40, okay? Well, I mean, it's obvious, this is an extreme example, but it's obvious if you add this together, you get 85, which makes this like a joke. This is like two full-time jobs plus five more hours on top of it. That's a busy, busy schedule. Well, um, most people, when they try to do something like this, they get to the end of the semester and they've either gotten great grades, which is kind of a miracle, but the whole rest of their life is sort of fallen apart, or their life is in great shape and they've gotten all D's and F's. Something's got to give. So what I ask this student is, um, can you cut units? Can you drop your units down? Because that will help, right? It drops the total. Uh, what do they say? They say, don't touch my units. Okay, and so this is out. And I want to ask you this just really quickly. Why do um, a lot of students who take a lot of units take a lot of units? There are two reasons. Yeah, one is uh, they have to. Anybody here who's on financial aid, unless you have an unusual type of financial aid, they basically say, do you want your money? And you say, yeah, full time, 12 units or more. And some people on financial aid have said, I wish I could take six units or eight or nine, that's about how much I can handle, but they make you take 12 or more. What's the other reason? What's the most common reason? Yeah, race, okay? Um, people say if I take 15 units in the fall, 18 in the spring, and then I'll take six in the summer, they're in a hurry, okay? This is especially true of people who are maybe a little bit older coming back to school and they're thinking, man, the clock is ticking, I gotta hurry, but the problem is, when you have a schedule like that, if you die before you graduate, it doesn't do you any good. And I see people every semester just burn right into the ground because they've taken on way more than they can handle. Well, this person says, forget it, don't touch my units. And then I ask them the stupid question, how about your work hours? Can you drop those way down? They say, you're gonna pay my bills? And I said, no. They said, can't touch that. Then what's left? That makes me very nervous, okay? So what this person says, and again, they might be very motivated and they might be very intelligent, very good student, is they say, I'm gonna go faithfully to class, I'm gonna work faithfully, and I'll study a few minutes here and there and hope I do okay. And no matter how good a student you are, if you don't have the time to devote to studying, you're never gonna make it. This is especially true as you go further in your education. When you get to a university, uh, it's kind of like, again, the pros instead of the college. If you're like an athlete, it's a whole other level. And if you just give a little leftover time to studying, you're never gonna survive. And so you have to figure out what you can handle. I've had some students who are single, unattached, hardly any responsibilities, they can handle more than this, like 60, 65. I've had some who are single moms, for example. They have one child, they have two, three children, whatever, and they have such a busy life that this number is way higher than they could handle. They can only handle like 30 or 25. So you're the one who knows, but what I wanted to have you think about for the future is that when you uh, get ready to enroll for the fall, for example, look at all the classes that you might take come up with the total units that you would be signing up for and then do the little math with the times two and then add any work hours and then look at the result like a job. And if you look at the hours and you think, that's good, I can deal with that, then sign up. 
if you look at the number and your eyes pop out of your head and you think, I'm going to kill myself if I do this, figure out a way to trim it down somehow. Again, that's really an important way to begin the whole process of time management because, again, if you've taken on too much, you just can't be successful. It's really hard. Okay? So that's the little magic number that we're focusing on. Um, any questions on that before we move ahead? Okay, uh, we have two more questions. The second one is actually a fairly short one. And um, I'm going to give you a handout in just a minute that goes with this. But here's the question, and that is, um, do I know how to set and reach goals? Okay, some people know how to set them. Most people don't reach them. Some people don't really even know how to set them. And so that's what we're going to look at for just about five to ten minutes. And I'm not going to get into this in a lot of detail, but I just, again, want to kind of get you thinking along these lines because a lot of people never think about this. And I think it's important because everybody in here has goals as a college student, I hope. Everybody has life goals. Some people say I have no goals. I just get up in the morning and then make it up as I go. So I guess that's okay if it works for you. Um, I'm going to pass a whole bunch of these back. So if you could uh, do that. Um, yeah, same thing here. Um, yeah, maybe a couple behind you. I guess that'll, that'll work. Um, if I miscount it or whatever, let me know. But otherwise, uh, we're going to move through this. Okay, at the very top of the uh, page, there's a, an acronym, the word SMART. And this is, again, the first letter of each letter in the word SMART is the first letter of one of the qualities of a good plan or a good goal. So I'm going to just go through these really briefly, and then I'm going to give you examples and tell you how that applies to school. Okay, so the first one, the S stands for specific. So the plan you make, the goal that you set, has to be very specific. The M is for measurable. Okay. The A is um, the hyphenated action-oriented. Okay. And then the R is for realistic. I can write that correctly. Okay, and then the last one, the T, is time-based. Okay, so let me give you a really quick example just from life in general. This has nothing directly to do with school. I'm going to tie that in in just a minute. Um, let's say that a person wanted to or needed to lose weight. People are on diets all the time and everything else. So let's say that uh, I woke up yesterday because that's the 1st of February and that's the time that everybody starts something new is the first day of a month because somehow that's like life begins again this month. And let's say that I woke up and I said, you know, I need to lose some weight. I need to get in better shape. So that's a goal. Okay. Um, that doesn't fit any of these here. Okay. If I said um, I need to lose some weight, uh, how about I'll lose 10 pounds? Okay, so is that specific? Is it measurable? Yes, right? So we're kind of good. Um, how about realistic? How long would it normally take a person in a healthy way to lose 10 pounds? Yeah, about maybe a month or so because that's like two pounds a week or a little bit more. So that's not, you know, crazy. That's realistic. If I said to you, I want to lose 10 pounds and if I see you Friday, you can weigh me and I'll lose it in three days. I think you'd say, uh, no, uh, that's not realistic. Okay. So time based again has a beginning and it has a ending date and that way, hopefully you can work toward it. But I could tell you all day, every day. Yep, I'm going to lose 10 pounds by the end of February. Going to do it. And again, you think all of this. And then your question should be, how? And if I say, well, just by, I don't know, trying hard. You look at me and say, well, no, no, but what's the plan? How are you going to do that? Well, um, I don't know. I'm just going to get up every morning and weigh myself and hope that it's less. You know, you look at me and say, well, that's probably not going to work. But if I told you, you know what, I am going to 
not eat anything after seven o'clock at night. I'm gonna go out for a half hour to an hour walk five days a week, and I'm not gonna go out to any fast food restaurants for the month of February. Then you're thinking, well, I'm not sure that's like completely enough, but that's a pretty specific and action-oriented plan because now I can just follow my plan. Okay, the more you have plans in life and you just say, yeah, one day I'm gonna hope to do this, you never really get there, you just sort of drift on. If you can learn to do this, all five of these, then at least a plan is very specific and you have a target that you can move toward. Okay, so what does this have to do specifically with school? Well, at the bottom of the page, again, this is something for the sake of time that I'm not gonna really have you fill out today during the workshop, but you can do it later on your own if you like, and that would be for you to write every class that you're taking this semester, and then to write the grade goal. And I wanna explain that for just a second. Um, what would be the grade goal um, for most people when they start taking a class? Yeah, A, All right? But the one thing you don't wanna do necessarily, and I've had people do this all the time, is that they write all their classes and then I look and it says A, 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 A. And I look at that and say, well, that's a good goal, but, um, is it realistic or not? Most of you probably know, even though it's only the fourth week, and I know you haven't gotten deeply into your classes yet, you know which ones are harder than other ones and which ones you may struggle with more. I always tell people that if you have a class, any class in college, and you have to use both hands to pick up the book, that's gonna be a hard class, okay? And so um, the idea is to be realistic and to say, okay, in my English class, I know that I can get an A if I work really hard. So that's realistic. I'm going to have to stretch a little, but I can do it. In my biology class, I would go out and have a party if I got a B because it's a really hard class and I'd love to get an A, but I just know it's going to be extra tough for me. Math, I hate math. If I pass, I'm going to do cartwheels down the street for the next uh, 10 years. And so you put down a goal that you feel is realistic for you, okay? And then the other part of this is the most important part. That's kind of why I went through this with you is what are you going to do to reach that goal? And so I've had students before, for example, who are in math, and especially if math is their least favorite subject, they say, I'm going to go for a B. And that's a pretty big leap for me, but I'm gonna go for a B. And I say, okay, how are you gonna get the B? And they say, do well. And I said, yeah, I know, but how are you gonna do well? They say, well, I'm just gonna try really hard. Well, that doesn't really fit these very much, so then I keep pressing them in a nice way, I hope, and here's what they finally come up with, just as an example. They say, in order to get the grade that I'm aiming for, for my math class, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I never miss class unless I have a huge emergency because I know that math builds on itself and if I miss, I'm gonna be behind. Also, I have a hard time concentrating when a teacher is teaching and math, I need to really focus. So I'm always gonna sit in the front row so that I have the best chance to concentrate. And I'm also gonna turn in every assignment on time so I don't lose any points for being late. And if the teacher offers any extra credit, I'm gonna grab every one of those points, okay? So that is a specific plan, it's measurable, it's realistic, there's action, et cetera, it fits it all. And if you just say, I'm hoping to get an A in one of my classes this semester, and you just say by just sort of getting good grades and hoping, then you probably won't reach it. But if you have specifics like that, then you have something to aim for every day and it usually helps you to come closer at least to uh, reaching those goals. Okay, so again, uh, this is something for you to take and if you wanna take a few minutes and think this through later and especially try to pin yourself down to specifics like I gave, uh, that would be helpful and again, that's, that's totally up to you, okay? Now, um, as the sign-in sheet goes around again, just remember when that gets to you to just sorta keep it flowing. The people in the back are saying, yeah, keep it coming so I know it's, it's coming back there but we have one more part of the workshop today which is going to take about 10 minutes or so and then we'll be done and that involves the third question that um, I always like to teach my students and I have a little sort of illustration or a story about that and that is this do I know what's coming. 
my experience with students is that um, way over half, maybe like three quarters of all students are not good at this. And if everybody learned to be good at it, their grades would improve. And so what I mean by this is this. If I walked up to you right now and I said, what do you have for school for the rest of the day today? Some of you might say, um, I have one more class this afternoon and then I need to go home tonight and start reading a chapter in one of my textbooks. So you kind of like know what you're going to do, I hope. Okay. If I asked you and you said, then I'd want to talk to you after the workshop. Okay. If I asked you, how about tomorrow? What, what's going on tomorrow for you with school? I hope you would know. But if I asked you, how about <clears throat> next week? How about three weeks from now? What's going to be going on then? If you're like most people, you just say, I don't know, I'll figure it out when I get there. But in order for you to be really good with your time management, <clears throat> because of the way college works, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to be able to go from here to seeing way, way out further. And that's the goal of this whole question and of what I'm about to give you. Um, this handout is a really simple looking thing. And when you look at it, you'll just think, yep, there it is. But I've had a lot of my students tell me by the end of the semester that this was the most helpful handout that they got. And many of them have come back after they're no longer my student to get the new one for the next semester and even the semester after that. They just keep coming. So I'm the supplier of calendars to the college. Okay. So let me explain why. Uh, first, how to use this and then why people tend to like this and it seems to help them. And as I'm going through this and explaining the basics of how to use it, I want to have you think about it and see if you can figure out <coughs> why people, <coughs> excuse me, tend to find this helpful and come back for more. Um, it's almost a mystery in a way, but hopefully we'll be able to solve it. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, as you can tell when you look at this, this is a uh, calendar for Long Beach City College for this semester, as the whole semester here. If you look at the bottom of the page, it has the dates of the semester. It has the dates of your final exams. I know you don't want to think about those yet, but they're coming. And again, unless you have a class that ends early, or unless you have a teacher who's done, doing something especially strange, all your finals this semester are going to be in that week and a half at the bottom of the page. So you can just kind of be aware that they're coming. In addition to that, you see all the holidays and the days off and the vacations and the flex days. And I think probably most of you know this, but just to make sure, what is a flex day? Yeah, day off for? Students. Students, but not for? Teachers, and people say I love those. Uh, yeah, well, those are the worst days of all for me, but for students, it's like a national holiday. There is only one flex day in the fall. There are two in the spring. You can see them right there, including one next Tuesday. And so you can sort of count the days till you have a day off. Uh, quick reminder, just sort of uh, pause here for a second. Every Wednesday, all semester long from 12 to 12 40 or 45 I'll be in here teaching a workshop with two exceptions one March 23rd I love my job but not that much and so I'm gonna be in meetings while you're sleeping and so no workshop on that day and then of course no workshop on April 27th because we're off on the spring break now I want to tell you one really quick thing before I sort of describe this I don't know if uh, those of you who have been around the college for even like a year or two if you look at this carefully, there's something very strange on this calendar, and that is the spring break that we have is the latest I think I have ever seen. And that's, that should be depressing to everybody because what everybody does in the spring when they get this calendar, everybody loves to see holidays and they have all this to look forward to. But Usually, the spring break is like three or four weeks earlier, and so when you start getting burned out on school, you just think a couple more weeks and then I get a week off. Now you go forever and burn out badly, and then by the time you get back from the vacation, you only have two more weeks and then there's finals. Uh, well, I hate that, and probably students, when we get near there, they're going to think, I need time off, and teachers will start staggering too. It's not my choice. It's the college plan, and it has to do with Easter and when that shows up, but it's just amazing how low it is on the schedule, okay? Now, um, 
if I gave this to you and just said, just put it in your notebook and look at it, uh, it might help okay. But that's not what it's for. The reason that this is supposed to be helpful is that a person would actually write information in some of these boxes. That's the point. So what kind of information, what important dates would you have as a college student that you would need to make sure you put on here? Yeah, test dates would be the most obvious. What else? Uh, yeah, possible. What else um, do teachers make you do? Yeah, homework. So homework due dates. It could be an uh, uh, appointment with a counselor or a teacher on the campus. It could be a speech or some kind of presentation. So important dates. All of that goes on here. How many of these do you get for a semester? One. This is like a master schedule. So everything for all your classes goes on this one sheet. Now you know these boxes are small. So you have to write really small. Sometimes you have maybe two things on the same day, so it's going to be kind of tough, but you write it all in here. Okay, what does not go on here? Everything else in your life. That goes into your phone or onto your wall calendar or whatever, you know, however you keep track of things, okay? Um, I always try to encourage people to keep this filled out in pencil because teachers change dates all the time, and if you start crossing things off, it's going to be hard after a while to even read the calendar. So it's a lot better to do it in pencil and then make adjustments as teachers make adjustments. Um, another thing uh, about this is that there is something missing from this calendar. I don't know if anybody noticed. Yeah, Sunday. When is the last time you saw a calendar that had a whole day of the week missing? Uh, probably never. And people look around all the time and they're looking for Sunday everywhere and it's not on there and that's to kind of remind you that this is just for school related things and not for the rest of your life. So if, oh and one other thing, um, how do you know where, what the dates are to put on here? Where do you find out that information? Sometimes syllabus, right, if the teacher has everything all laid out. Uh, what's the other source? Yeah, if the, if the teacher has a website, that's handy, right? Have it there. But the other way is the old-fashioned way, yeah. out of the mouth of the teacher. So a lot of teachers, and I'm kind of like this with a lot of my things, when they have a test coming up, when they have an assignment coming up, they announce it a week or two ahead of time, and they write it on the board or whatever. So that's when you grab this and you add that to it so that it's accurate, you know, that it's up to date. Okay, so um, I want to see if you can figure out this is your test for the day. I'm not allowed to give you tests in these workshops, but I'm going to give you one anyway. There are two reasons why a lot of students find this to be even more helpful than a day planner or a wall calendar and keep coming back for more. One's a big reason. The other one is a small reason. Just based on the way this looks, what might be helpful or attractive to somebody about this? Organization. Yeah, organization is true, but how many pages is it? One. one. Um, the whole semester is on one page. Why is that different than a planner or a calendar? Here's why. Okay, I'm going to give you this example. This is my number one example to give because it happens all the time to me. And I nearly have a heart attack every time this happens, so it's good that my heart is pretty good because otherwise I'd be gone by now. I want you to look back to last week because this is when it happened. It always happens like this. Find Tuesday, January 25th on the calendar. It's very easy to spot. Now that was the third week, right? So very early in the semester. And that is, I, I, I met a guy, I kind of ran into a student and I said, how's everything going this semester? And he said, great. I said, have you had any tests yet? Nope. That's why everything's going great. Okay, and I said, uh, what classes do you have? And he started, he said, well, I see, I've got psychology. I said, okay, stop there. Do you have a quiz or test coming up pretty soon? He said, I think so. I said, well, what date is it? Uh, I don't know. Let me look. And he looked in his syllabus, and there it was, you know, right there, black ink. It said, it said that it was on uh, Thursday, February uh, 3rd. Okay? So I want you to look again at find January 25th and February 3rd. It's easy to see, right? It's right there. Well, here's the reason I almost had a heart attack. Um, I said to him, ooh, the test is on February 3rd. Are you doing all your reading and you're getting through the chapters and kind of getting ready? And he said, what I've heard a lot from students, he said, I haven't even started yet. I haven't even taken the shrink wrap off the book yet. 
And I said, why? And his answer, which again, I've heard from students many times over the years, scares me every time I hear it. He said, well, I haven't because the test is next month. <laughs> next month. Now, is that true? Yeah, what you're supposed to say is, well, technically. Yeah, because we were in January and the test was in February. But when you look at this, you also know what? It's next, it's next week. And you know as a human being that when you keep thinking that something you have to do is next month, you walk around all day and if anybody asks you about it, you say, next month. <laughs> I have a lot of time, no big deal. But when it's next week, that suddenly changes everything. And it's very much human nature for us to focus on the month <coughs> we're in and not think about the next month until the next month. And yesterday was the first day of February and if you had anything to do for your personal life or a bill to pay or school and you thought that's February and then suddenly you look yesterday, you panic. Okay, So that's impossible to happen with this unless you never look at it because again it's all right there. And students so often end up getting caught off guard and the other part of this is that I've had students before who have a syllabus for one of their classes and it says that they have a test on uh, February 2nd. They have another syllabus in another notebook or in the same one and it says that they have one on February 3rd. And it's right there. It, but they don't realize, hey, that's two days in a row. I got a big test. When you put everything on here, it's all in one place and you can see better. Now, are there any people in here who um, are in your very first semester of college? If so, can I just see a show of hands? I'm not going to ask you to say anything. Okay. Uh, you don't know this yet. I'm going to let you in on a big secret. Everybody else is going to think, yeah, almost all of you in your college education every semester you have some weeks during the semester that are kind of on the light side in terms of how much you have to do and then some weeks are like the week from hell so if you filled this calendar out and you had everything in there that you could possibly know for now and you looked a couple weeks from now and you saw the week of February 14th and you saw everything blank except maybe just one quiz on February 16th, otherwise everything is blank, you'd look at that and just think, this is going to be my favorite week of the whole semester because it's no big deal. But if you looked at the week of February 21st, the week after that, and you had two tests on Tuesday, a project due on Wednesday, a speech to give on Thursday, one more test on Friday, just like everything at once, I hope you would look at that now and say, I can't have a vacation week this week because look at that coming up. I got to start now. It kind of pushes you to action. And remember I said before, this is supposed to help you to know what's coming. So that means instead of this, you're able to look off in the future and see where the really busy weeks are and try to plan better than to just sort of make it up as you go along, which is really hard for college students. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then the other one, I'm just going to give you, this will just take a minute or two. Did the sign-in sheet uh, make it around? Is it? Okay, if, have you uh, signed in here? Yeah, okay, so I'll double check in just a minute. Okay, here's the other one, it's a very minor thing. I see students every semester, at least a couple of them, this is what happens, they miss class, they're absent. Nothing all that unusual about that. And then I see them the next time we have class, sometimes I'm walking right to the classroom with them. And I see them and I say, hey, how are you doing? I missed you last time, is everything okay? And here's their answer, what do you mean you missed me? We didn't have class. I said, yes, we did. And they say, no, no, we didn't. You know, real confident. I said, yeah, we did. They were confused. Why were they confused? Because they said, my brother had the day off school. So I thought it was a national holiday. Okay, you know, I think that different schools have different days off. And sometimes people are really confused because every other student they know has the day off. And they're thinking, well, that must mean me too. If you're ever wondering, do I go to school tomorrow? Do we have school or not? All you have to do is look on this. And if it doesn't say holiday or flex day or whatever, you know that we have school. And I've had students before, again, they think I have this power that I don't have. And they try to convince me to have more holidays. <laughs> you know, and it's not up to me. And look what's coming up in less than two weeks. What is, you better know this. What's Monday, February 14th? Valentine's Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day. And so people look at me like this. <laughs> uh, come on. 
you know, the day of love, we got to have that off. And they're out like campaigning for a holiday. And I said, look, it's not up to me. I'd put a lot more holidays on there. And other people have said that about Groundhog's Day and Columbus Day, and they're just like trying anything they can. So this eliminates any confusion about when there is school and when there isn't. And that helps people who have others in their life who are going to school and they just kind of get a little lost on that from time to time. So what I would encourage you to do with this is to use this during the semester along with whatever other way you keep track of things and kind of do it the way that I described it. And at the end of the semester, if it was sort of okay, then at least you tried it, no big deal. If you liked it and it helped you to always see what's coming, then you'll come find me next semester and maybe get a new one for that. And again, that's part of the experimental process just to figure out what might work for you, okay?